This is Eric Mwade for the weekend of June 21st and June 22nd, 2014. Let's take a look at how markets closed for the Friday session here. We continue seeing markets that are moving in very narrow ranges here with the Dow, Nasdaq and the S&P 500 up slightly, about 0.2% for the day. You see that crude oil continues trying to move higher, up about 0.74%. And the VIX did have a slight uptick on Friday's session. Let's take a look at the weekly action. You see that for the week, the S&P 500 managed to move and close at all-time weekly closing highs, up about 1.38%. We see that also the Dow closed at all-time weekly closing highs. For the week, the Dow was up 1%. And we see that the NASDAQ closed at fresh multi-year weekly closing highs and it was up 1.33%. So it was a net-net good gain for anybody who was long the market this week. So let's take a look at the annotated charts to see how the markets are setting up for the next couple of days, next couple of weeks. Let's begin by taking a look at the NASDAQ. And you can see on the NASDAQ here, one can say that this seems like a cup handle and a breakout formation based on the weekly chart. And I can show you a, a shorter term weekly chart. This one goes back to 2010. So let me show you a short term weekly chart to show you that this could actually be looked at as a cup and handle formation, suggesting that we could conceivably have more upside just given that formation. And so if you take a look at the NASDAQ here, showing you the two-year weekly for the NASDAQ chart here, you can see that it seems like a very nice, well-constructed one-week handle here and a breakout. And if that's the case, then I can understand why somebody could want to be bullish given that chart by itself. The only problem here is if we go back to the weekly chart for the NASDAQ, go back a couple of years actually, and I talked about this in the last weekend analysis video. This red line here, this red line has been where we've, we've been seeing pullbacks in the market. And I'll show you because it's, it's good to know where the pullbacks have been coming. You can see that there was a high here in price is when we hit that red line. Eventually it would come and pull back below here, which was that high. We hit that level here and pull back below the red line, which was that high. There was a slight move below that red line here, which was here before a slight pullback. And you can see on and on and on. And recently, we pull back below the line there, which was this high before this pullback. So what I'm saying here, we have to be careful because we are back in this general area. If the market turns around here and has resistance on this red line, more than likely, we might see a weekly pullback that could last a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Now let's take a look at the NASDAQ daily. And on the daily, we see that we close at fresh 52 week closing highs on a daily chart. And as long as the market is holding above 43.57.97, which is this daily closing high there, then this can be looked at as a breakout. So on the daily, there's a breakout right now. As long as the market can hold above 43.57.97, the market is okay. If it moves back below that, then that could suggest that this daily breakout has failed. So to me, as, as long as the MACDs on the daily are holding above, and I've got different settings for my MACD. So let's take the main MACD setting of 12, 26.9 as long as the MACD is holding above zero on the daily the market should be safe in terms of uptrend even with a pullback now if we take a look at the Nasdaq 60 minute chart we start seeing signs of potential setup to go lower why because we've been making incremental higher highs on the hourly but you can see that the RSI continues staying in this general lower lows so lower lows on the RSIs for now, higher highs in price could be a trap, suggesting that if the market starts pulling lower here 
and this becomes confirmed as negative divergence then we get this pullback in price just because the RSI has failed to move higher in step or in conjunction with the price moving to new highs. If you take a look at the NASDAQ 30 minute chart, you start seeing again the same type action here, higher highs in price, but you can see that the RSI on the 30 minute chart is not moving higher. So that could be setting up to push this market lower because of this technical defect here. So unless the market can break out on the hourly RSI and also break out here on that price level, more than likely we are looking at hour to hour potential for the market to have a pullback. Now what is really confusing and what is tricky here is the fact that you see that the RSI continues holding above 69.10 and we've been talking about the market conceivably having a nice move as long as it holds above 69.10 something it's done I would say go back going back to the middle of 2012 so all this period is because the RSI has held above 69.10 and therefore as long as the market is holding above that the market should be very bullish remember it's only when the market moves back below 69.10 that we get major pullbacks in any market. It's only when markets move back below 69.10, we get this major bear market. So as long as you are holding above 69.10, it is okay to play momentum stocks if you can find them, especially if you can find leadership sectors, that would be the way to go. If we take a look at the, let's take a look at the Dow weekly. And on the Dow weekly, again, fresh, all-time weekly closing highs and again we see that this level here is has been tricky on the weekly chart on the RSI every time we hit that level or move below that level the market has a pullback as you can see here would we'll come back and hit that level here which is this level here and again you see that the market had a pullback very simple we came back and hit this level here in uh, 2012 October and we had this pullback we would eventually hit that move below that level there which was that high there and we had a multi-week pullback here all right and then again here beginning of 2014 which is this high here was the reason for this pullback here so you can see that right now we are trading exactly at that blue level if we find resistance and if we move lower like that more than likely this can be looked at as a trap and don't forget that it seems to me that the market is again trading in this um, round number 17,000 so this 17,000 could become a big round number that the market has some difficulty moving above so let's watch that 17 thousand level to see what happens but more important let's watch this level which has been a trap on the weekly charts for the Dow and for the general market as a whole if you take a look at the Dow daily the Dow daily um, I don't have really major observation here but again 17,000 could become an area where people might decide to pull back their buying intentions we'll see Let's take a look at the MACDs and I want to show you that on the MACDs as long as the MACDs are holding above zero then momentum continues being to the upside as long as you're holding above zero on the MACDs momentum will continue being to the upside and I have uh, a series of videos on the MACD on how to read the MACD so being above zero just means that momentum is to the upside look at the Dow 60 minute chart and you can see again making incremental highs in price here incremental highs in price on the hourly but the RSI is not making a higher high and we are coming back to this previous breakpoint so here so you can see that here this could be a trap because we've hit that line this could be negative divergence and this could also turn out to be a trap so we have to be careful here hour to hour seems to me that the market could actually have a pullback but week to week, month to month, we haven't seen a major sell signal in the market. So 
if you have a longer term, maybe a couple of weeks, a couple of months out, the market has yet to break down on the monthly chart. So that should mean that the market should be safe next couple of weeks. If we take a look at the S&P 500 weekly, fresh weekly closing highs, all time weekly closing highs. And now we are bumping with this channel highs here and this channel highs that so that's where it's been trading in this nice parallel action and so we are seeing the hit this hitting that level there if that's a an area we, we can expect some pullback because it's been stalling the market here over the last couple of months and in fact if you go back to even this slight level there so this is an area where you'd expect the market to pull back just from this channel and again without going into same analysis we have to be careful about this weekly level here which has been pulled back territory as far as the s p 500 if you can hold above that that's bullish just like when you held above that line there was this nice period this advanced period here so as long as you're holding above that blue line it's okay but if you move back below the blue line this could be an area of, of resistance an area of price moving lower because you can see without going into too much examples here this was also a high when you hit that level was a high here when you hit that level was a high there when you hit that level so this has been the resistance level to watch on the weekly rsi if you move back below that line here that could suggest the market wants to move higher if you hold above the line the market should be okay to the upside take a look at the s p 500 and you can see again the s p 500 doing well ever since it broke out above 1900 which was this breakout on a daily chart there it's held above that so above 1900 even with full backs it should be safe and recently we see it move above 1950 so breaking out also again after a couple of days of consolidation so as long as it's holding above 1950 as long as it's holding above 1900 the market should continue having a bullish tone let's take a look at the s p 500 hourly and you can see just the same observation here we have to be careful if this turns out to be negative divergence because that could be a reason for a pullback and i forgot to show you the dow 30 minute chart if you take a look at the dow 30 minute chart you can see that we've been making incremental highs on the 30 minute chart for the for the dow and yet if we draw this line here you can see that once we broke below this level here that line which was this high here so we are coming back and we seem to be failing to move back above the blue line seems to me that short term this could be a trap because you can see the back test here is failing hope that makes sense so we got a back test fail here we get negative divergence on the 30 minute because of higher highs and lower technicals on the rsi if that the, if that is the picture more than likely we get a pullback in the general market also so one thing that is holding the market together is the fact that the s p 500 on the monthly continues holding above 69.10 it's been trading above 69.10 since i would say somewhere about here since 1500 it's been generally on the monthly holding above 69.10 and that's why we've seen this acceleration in price just like we had a nice acceleration here in price between 95 and 99 which corresponds to this advance so as long as the market holds above these levels which is what it's doing right now you really have to be open to the market moving higher and actually picking up momentum let's take a look at the qqq daily i want to show want to show you here that again we have a daily back test scenario so you can see we are making higher highs in price here on the qqq but you can see the rsi is not moving much higher so that's one reason to be a little bit cautious and you can also see that there's a back test of this blue line this blue line is where we broke down here which was this high before a significant pullback here so this pullback here and so we see that we are 
contending with this level here seems to be back test resistance if that continues being the case i would say that this is an, a level to watch for a pullback based on that daily chart now if we go to the vix daily and this is one observation in my opinion that would make you be bullish if you take a look at the vix it's really not set up to move the vix can only move when it moves above this declining top lines recent daily closing highs gives you that declining price channel it needs to be above this channel here if it's gonna spike just like the last time it spiked was here when it moved above that downward trading channel and also there was a slide here when it moved here that's when it moved high and again also it has to move above previous trend lines for it to spike so any spike in the VIX can only come in my opinion about this declining line and also if it can move above the declining top lines on the daily RSI so I don't see much action in terms of the VIX being ready to move but you can say it's been finding support here on the daily this is where it's been finding support on the RSI on the daily so you know you can say that yes given this the fact that it's trying to hold this level here that the VIX could actually start creeping to the upside I just trying to say here that momentum can only come when it moves above this declining price channel top line so let's take a look at one more chart here and it is for Apple we take one weekly actually take a look at the monthly we've been saying that if the stock can hold if Apple can hold above 91.48 it could be breaking out you can see that this is now turning into resistance if it holds below 91.48 which is what it's doing this could turn out to be a failed breakout suggesting that the next move or the next trend in the stock is going to be lower so watch that 91.48 we've been saying above that it's a buy below that it could be positioning itself to go lower 